Um, I guess my first question is in the regards of um, the kind of the, the, the tale and, and the context. So when do you decide or, or how do you decide that the Huckleberry Finn story and Tom Sawyer would fit well within Mexico's current um, situation? I love the books of Mark Twain, and I always try to to inspirate with the atmosphere of the Mark Twain and Mississippi and the, and the kids. Mm -hmm. And in one moment, I feel very close the book with the um, context of Mexico because I have the idea, idea that the people that work in Mex in, with the narcos in Mexico are like slaves. Mm -hmm. no? They don't, they don't can to quit to this work. And also many people in Mexico have to immigrate because the violence, no? they have to run away and and also yes i don't know with this movie i also try to to play with the story no? and i decide to play with some with the things that i loved when i was a child like hockey Finn, mad max Baseball, um, and also I, I love this movie, The Night of the Hunter, mm -hmm. and I try to mix all these elements to, to for for a speak about Mexico. It's the first time that I wrote a movie, inspired in other creators. I always try to make movies about, about me. Mm -hmm. And in this movie, I try to, to change. But also, I think in this moment that I, I am a father, and I feel more this movie about the, pat, to the paternity, paternidad. Fatherhood. Fatherhood. Yes and how the fathers in Mexico have a lot of scare with his kids and the context of in Mexico. Which is basically, my second question was leading to that. Uh, the protagonist is your daughter, yes. Matilde Hernandez Guinea, and your, old, your other daughter is also featuring the film. Um, first, why did you decide to cast your own daughter? Um, but also it's interesting, I guess, that parallel between um, the character and her father, but also between you as filmmaker and the father of, of, of the child actor. You know, also I see some also kind of a personal connection there. Can you? Yes. yes. In one moment, the producers have a lot of scare because it's very difficult to work with the father of the actors mm -hmm. because, because the fathers always have uh, a scare about his kids and all that things. And I answered to my producers and I said, I never, nunca le haría algo que no le haría a mi hija. I would never do anything that I wouldn't, that I would do to my daughter. And when I say that, I think in, the, in seconds about my daughter, Matilde, yeah, and I said, yes, it can be nice to work with her because they also don't, don't live with me, they live in, in Guatemala, and try to explain what is the context of my work, why I decide to live in Mexico to, to make movies, and also, for me the movies are the, memo are the memory, and like director, I have the idea that the directors, they, we create moments. No? And I try to create a, 
a special moment with my daughters, and I know that they never forget this movie and this experience. And, and also, I want to feel in the camera the love of my daughters about me. Mm -hmm. Yes, make a portrait about the, that love. Because also my daughters are very um, maternal, maternalis? Yes, maternal. Yes, with, with me. Mm -hmm. and, the, the, and the principal character are very maternal with the father, and she has many. Uh, cuidar, ¿cómo se dice cuidar? Um, to take care. Yeah. Yes, she take care to the father, and sometimes they change the, the roles. No, that sometimes the father is like a kid, and sometimes the daughter is the smaller. Um, yes, for this reason. Can you talk a bit about the art direction in terms of how you envision this uh, post-apocalyptic Mexico? I mean, it's pretty impressive also how, you know, um, kind of this environment you create. Can you talk about that? Do you have it pretty clear from the beginning? How do you work uh, creating this atmosphere? Yes, I, 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 I like Mad Max. And I, I feel Mad Max like is in the um, future, but also is talking about the present. Mm -hmm. huh? And I, f I feel also in Mexico that this future is very close, but, but very, very close in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And also for me, Mexico was a narco state, huh? R really the the power of the towns are the narcos. Um, and also we have this problem with the missing uh, women in Mexico. No? Many, many women dis disappeared in Mexico. And I want to, I, for me it's important to the, the movies on the st and the stories talk about that space of the director. Para mí fue, y sobre todo la intención era que este futuro apocalíptico está más cercano al presente que al futuro. For me, it was that the, this apocalyptic future is closer to the present than to the future. Y también, sorry to, to speak in, in Spanish, but for me, all, uh, para mí también es muy injusto que México pague las consecuencias del narcotráfico mundial. For me, also it's very unjust that Mexico pays for the causes of um, um, international drug trafficking. Uh, sí, y esta película es sobre sobre eso, ¿no? Que como México padece lo que se consume en todo el mundo. And this is ultimately what the film is about, how Mexico suffers while it's being consumed um, everywhere in the world. And, and just one question before we open the, um, the floor. Um, I'm also very intrigued by your collaboration with uh, Nicolas Wong, uh, the cinematographer from Costa Rica, who's, I think, an amazing talent. Uh, this is the second time you work with him. Can you also um, talk a, a little bit about your relationship uh, with him? He, he's very young. His filmography maybe uh, included uh, 20 movies. It's very prolific also. And I did this uh, very small movie in Costa Rica, Atrás de Relámpagos, like a, a, a gorilla uh, movie. And I invite to him to this movie because I need someone that I can trust and he can trust with me because the producers told me maybe you can't work in this movie with this big star of photographer, but I prefer to, to work with people like is close to me because like this way I have freedom to decide and I don't have to, to explain why I want to move the camera like that, or why I don't want li lights. And, and also, I, I love to work with my friends. 
and my principal photographer is or Maria Seco. But um, estaba, estaba embarazada. No? She was pregnant at the time. Yeah. Great. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Um, and I think we have a, do we have a mic? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, I'm just curious what the significance of having the, the main boss um, also want to be a woman. He felt both as, as a man and a woman. Yes, because I love Mad Max, and I love that movie of Tina Turner in Mad Max. In, in one moment, I tried to make a female character, and somebody told me, but in this moment, it can be difficult because all these things about Me Too and that women are not the bad, guy, the bad uh, characters. And I try to to make a, a character that can be both, no? because also the narcotraffic work, man and woman, and both are very cruel, cruel, cruel. And how is it coqueto in English? Coqueto, uh, I'm sorry? Flirting or flirty. Yes. I feel that the narcos very coquetos. Very flirty. <laughs> huh? They always use the guns with jewels and... Seducing. Many, they, the cars are very expensive. And I try to make a character, a strange character and also like no common character no I think uh, without cliche character about narcos because always in the mexico in the mexican movies the narcos are very masculine like cowboys boots hats um, yeah i don't feel the the narcos the real narcos like that i remember when two years ago when when Champagne interviewed a Chapo, a Chapo Guzman, and when I listened the voice of Chapo, I said, what? He speak very awful and he speak like a kid. I don't know why he have a lot of power because he, he's very small and he's, his voice is like, like, like a joke. <laughs> and when I listen that, I say, I want my character like, like him, like a normal person, human person, and also to, to play with this character. And also every, every person can, I don't know, I want to make movies that make can make que questions about the story. ¿no? Más bien, me interesó hacer un personaje que fuera como ambivalente y que generara dudas acerca del, del personaje sin que se, se aclarara, ¿no? que la gente al final de la película pensara en quién es este personaje y por qué está ahí. ¿no? I was interested in doing kind of a dual, kind of ambiguous um, character that uh, would generate uh, questions in the audience and uh, wonder make the audience wonder why, you know, why, why is the character there, but uh, leave those uh, um, questions unanswered. Y sobre todo que es una historia de un, de un lugar que no hay mujeres y que la niña le generara este conflicto de que si es mujer y que si, y que, o si es hombre y que, y que estuviera enamorada de su cabello largo, que fuera como su leitmotiv, ¿no? el cabello largo y que esta persona, que tu, la única persona que tuviera cabello largo fuera como asexual o sí. And uh, said in this place that there's no women and that the and the the, the girl, um, you know, didn't have a, any female reference and that she would uh, be in love with her long hair, but that the, the only uh, character that she could relate with the long hair was kind of a, a asexual character. Yep. Two more. Sure. 
I'm curious about the age of your daughter when you made the film, and also, did she see the complete film, the film when it was completed? Because it seems like it's very violent for a child her age. Yes. She had nine, nine years old in this moment. And yes, she saw the movie in the, when I was cutting the movie. And also when we present the movie in, in Cannes, she, she went and present the movie. And I spoke with the mother. And I, I explained to her that Matilde is a, a big fan of Star Wars. And she saw many, many dead people in that movies. Many, many people. Maybe 2,000, I don't know, in each movie. <laughs> and in my movie, we only ki kill five persons. <laughs> and and I, I, I explained that for, to, to her. And she told me, yes, you are right. <laughs> there was another question up here, and then we'll go back there. Uh, this is the first film that I've seen of yours, and uh, well, first of all, it's uh, it was very invigorating to see um, a film of of this cleverness, and and it gave you a sense of um, I was very uh, anxious the whole movie, and uh, I thought it was I think you definitely achieved your your ideas, but my question is. Um, was it your intent at the end um, to to give this sort of um, sense of hope uh, in in the search of her of her or her, in her search for for to find her dad again? Do you intend to, was that uh, intended to um, continue with the story in a in a in a, in a different light? Uh, is there a, is there another film? I mean, do you plan on doing a sort of a? I, I hate to say sequel, but do you plan on doing another film that would maybe reference back to this this film, or is it just uh, a sense of hope for? Me costó como escuchar un poquito más que si al final que si hay un sentimiento de esperanza que si vas a haber una secuela o secuela. That ending was improvised in this moment. The, in, the, in the screenplay, the movie end with the, um, when she killed the, the, the narco, the capo. But in the shooting, I feel very sad, the movie. Yeah, I tried to change this. And we recorded this when she was play, uh, hit the, the, the ball. And I feel this ending like more, with more hope, and also like, sorry, um, I love Mad Max, and I, I want to feel like we have other, uh, Sequel. uh, sí. sequelas? Sequels. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Matilde, my daughter, every week she asks ask me, when we will shoot the movie because I want to rescue my father in the, of the movie. <laughs> and normally my, my movies are very sad in the endings. This is sad, but it's less sad <laughs> than the others. Um, yes, I, want, I am waiting the, the call of the producers that Please, you have to write the other part of the movie. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Kind of a, actually a related question. Um, there was a change of government, federal government in Mexico last year. Do you see any hope for any change soon uh, in terms of the context of the country? Or? Yes. Yes, I feel happy with the new president because He have other energy. Um, she, he also tried to, he said, my government, for my government, first are the poor people. Huh? And 
I know that he, he are cutting many, many budget about the many places, but he said that we will use this money for the people more fragile. Fra fragile? Fragile. Fragile, yes. It's difficult because in Mexico the movies are you use uh, government money, but we have to think about in plural, no? only not only in yeah. yeah. And I feel like in Mexico, many many decades years, nobody think in plural. We have time for one more question, sure. Well, we'll take both. Hola, buenas tardes. Quería preguntarte sobre el cambio, la escena eh, cuando ella se levanta y están todos muertos, que aparece todo flat y dibujado. Como, ¿Cuál fue la idea que, que tenías para ese cambio de, de estética? Como que nos lleva a otro lugar y luego, y luego vuelve. So I wanted to ask about the the scene of the um, uh, when everything appears flat when she wakes up and uh, there's like a uh, you know like flying and we see her walking among drawings hmm. many the reason are very many elements first because I want to care to my daughters. I don't want to that she saw dead people, no? many dead, pe dead, pe uh, dead people. Second, in Guatemala, the Indians draw with this style. They say that it's like an eye of the bird. No? It's like cenital. It's like a homenage. Homage. Homage about this style of painting. And third, I have the idea that every movie has to to produce to produce a unique image. That mm. with this unique image can you can forget the movie. When you think about this movie, you think about this image that, that you never saw in another movie. This is my, my feeling, and I tried. I know that this is very difficult to, to do, but I try with this image that this image can be the, and see, yes, the, people, the people can say, ah, the, the movie with the, with the flat, uh, death or something like that. Um, yes. Okay, one last question. Sure. Thank you for an incredible film. I just loved it. I, was, I kept going with you, going with you, and I like the end because it's bittersweet. There's a threat. But my question, um, as I was watching this, in addition to Huck Finn, I kept thinking of Lord of the Flies. Only you had flipped it. Would you talk about that? Flipped it meaning the children are the civilized and the civilization is now uncivilized. Yes, I inspired also in Lord of the Flies and also in Lost Boys of Peter Pan. No? I used these, also these two elements to, to, to wrote the movie. And for me, when I was a child, sometimes when I remember, I feel like very primitive. Uh, with the place that I play was very, sometimes very, very, very violent, with, con mucha violencia. With a lot of violence. Hacíamos guerras de balinazos, que son estos 